Everybody loses their shoes. Everybody loses their shoes. You got, you're gonna, there's gonna be a point in your life, no matter who you are in the world, if you wear flip-flops, you're gonna lose one flip-flop. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna happen. That's, yeah, that's life. Yeah. I forgot your question though, but I think that was kind of it. I don't know. Like what, you know, the thing, the thing that happens on YouTube that is not a video that, that makes you as a data analyst think like, this is an interesting thing, or this is a, you know, this is a, either a problem or a, a, like a, a, a point of interest. Ah. Uh. You know, like, because I'm sure that you view YouTube differently than I do. You know, like, I view it as a collection of people trying to communicate with one another and represent things to each other, both uh, using and working against the technology that exists. But that's very much my, you know, critical theory and, and you know, semiotics leanings mm -hmm. that make that happen. Well, for me, I view YouTube as the medium that it is. Like, so Mr. Rogers, huge influence on my life. Yeah. Because he's, like, the greatest man alive, formerly. Um... But like he, he has this quote, and I actually put it at the end of the first part of Hank's interview, which you should watch, by the way, okay. uh, where he says, you know, fame is a four-letter word, and just like tape or zoom or face or pain or life or love, what ultimately matters is what we do with it. Yeah. And we in television, he feels that, I feel that we in television are called to be servants. Uh, regardless of what our job, we are here to enrich the lives of all of these other people that watch us day and night. Yeah. And like... For me, when I look at YouTube, I don't see it like I see it as I see the community aspects, but I see it as the next television. Right. Um, and I see it as like what television could have been, what Mr. Rogers had been hoping television was going to be. Right. But for everyone, like so, I look at Crash Course because Crash Course is on DVDs. Yeah. And I realize that hey, that solves so many geopolitical problems that all of these countries face in regards to getting access to the internet. Can't access the internet. Fuck it, you know, bypass it. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you've got all of these people on YouTube that come up with these awesome, innovative solutions and that are actually thinking about the stuff that they're putting out there, that's the stuff that I see that just makes me be like, whoa. Yeah. Like, the world is full of interesting, intelligent people and a lot of them care so much, which, whoa. Yeah. By the way, talking to everybody, like, nobody's just like, ah, yeah, I'm just Whatever, I just this is just a thing I do. This is just a thing. Um, that's <laughs> you can't you can't be a person yeah. making YouTube videos and thinking to yourself, I'm this is just a thing I'm doing. Yeah. This is just I mean, you can, but you you probably will not not many people are gonna watch them because that attitude comes across. Yeah. And even like Emily is like, you know, I make my videos because I didn't see the point like once I finished my master's thesis, you know, I didn't see the point. Where's where is the logic of making this thing that I spent a year of my life making that only like four or five people are going to see? I'd rather, you know, if I'm going to invest some time, I'm going to make it so everyone can see it. Yeah. And like, yes, that makes so much sense. And so that's kind of how I view YouTube. It's a way for people's lives to get better. It's yeah. a way for people to help each other, um, even though sometimes they might not realize it. Yeah. Um, because ultimately, so once I finish all of my education, um, one of the things that I want to help do is get, I want to make YouTube videos more accessible to everyone, Yeah. either through like captioning or subtitles or whatever, but also through bringing it to places where there is no internet or bringing internet to places where there is no internet so that you have the sum total of all human knowledge yeah. right there. It's right there for you. Um, this is, um, I mean, it's a really interesting... It's it, you know it's such an interesting set of questions that butt up against this the question of like how you know how the creation of, of knowledge changes in a in a post internet world and it's like you know it's it's you, you like you like you're basically you are talking about about figuring out new ways to create knowledge for another part of the world which is you know that's huge yeah that's huge and amazing and a lot of that comes from like being a linguist and doing intelligence analysis stuff like I am fairly well educated on RF stuff yeah and so I understand that for every problem there might not be a solution but there probably is yeah it just might not be what you think it is yeah so like let's take random country let's say it's Kiribati which is this tiny little island nation okay um, and they are comprised of dozens of islands and this okay. isn't really Kiribati I just can't remember the real name of the country 
All right. Um, but they have this government policy where because all islands can't get equally fast internet, every access point is going to be throttled. So that everybody has equal internet. Yeah, okay. even though on the main capital island... You can get crazy fast. Oh, yeah, like a gazillion gigabits per second. Right. Uh, so then the question, like the problem I see solving is either convincing... Like, you find out if you can get the government to unthrottle it as much as possible, or you just figure out, well, okay, we're doing this the hard way, and we're setting up microwave dishes on every island, and we make this network. And maybe, just maybe, we just solve some other huge problem that they were having. Yeah. So that's kind of like way, way, way unpredictably far in the future, in my future, but that's kind of what I'm aiming at. Yeah. Oh, that's so rad. Yeah. That's super rad. Yeah. If you ever need any help, um, I can play guitar. Awesome. <laughs> well, maybe maybe you could be like the, the peace ambassador. Yeah. <laughs> we, the United States, have sent you our wonderful Mike Rugnetta. <laughs> I know some Ryan Adams songs. <laughs> Which one would you like to hear? Uh, Sylvia Plath. That's a, hey, that's a good one. That's my favorite. Uh, pol political scientists would have been, I think, the appropriate. <laughs> all right, well, hey, I think that's all I got. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. Uh